Hello everyone, I'm Christopher Tan and welcome to Providence Money Wisdom, an original podcast inspired by my book Money Wisdom, Simple Truths for Financial Wellness. In this podcast, I'll be sharing simple financial truths to guide you in navigating through the minefields of misinformation and false promises in order to achieve financial security and peace of mind. Hello everyone. Thank you so much for listening to the Money Wisdom Podcast. I would like to take this opportunity to wish all Singaporeans a happy National Day. This is our 57th birthday and it is especially meaningful after what we have gone through over the past two years. So enjoy this significant day and hopefully it is also a time of rest as you take a break from work. Benchmarking hedge funds. Many investors will be familiar with the use of indices such as the MSCI World, the S&P 500 and others for benchmarking against active managers. In assessing their performance, fund managers are often compared to the relevant benchmarks to see whether they have consistently outperformed them. However, this method of evaluating actively managed funds may not be applicable to the hedge fund evaluation process. Hedge fund indices are constructed from a number of hedge funds designed to track the performance of the hedge fund universe and its various sub-strategies. This data is one of the most practical means of analyzing the industry and the behavioral traits of the individual hedge fund strategies. It is also a useful way to form general views about different types of hedge funds. However, it may not be exactly accurate to use these indices as benchmarks against which particular investments can be measured. It is unfortunate that the very word index seems to encourage this notion. Why is this so? Well, firstly, hedge funds explicitly target absolute returns and not relative returns. Given so, the use of benchmarks may not make any sense. Furthermore, hedge funds deliberately seek to distinguish themselves from one another. Different managers often execute the same specialist strategy in different ways so that an index of all their returns mark considerable diversity. As an example, convertible arbitrage has many strategies and not just one strategy. In addition to all these theoretical problems, there are other practical issues with hedge funds indices as well. Well, firstly, survivorship bias. When hedge fund indices are being assembled for the first time, most providers include only those funds still in existence. The omission of many failed funds tend to provide an upward bias to the index performance. Secondly, reporting bias. Many people call hedge funds a black box as data on many of the funds are unavailable. This is because reporting of fund performance data is often voluntary. For practical reasons, many hedge fund managers are less likely to report their data until they have established an attractive track record. Many may only report attractive segments of their record. Thirdly, inclusion. Many hedge funds indices are constructed by fund performance data vendors. They may only include the limited range of funds that, well, they have in their database. Unfortunately, some hedge fund managers may not report their data if there is no incentive for them to do so. As a result, the index may not indicate a comprehensive range. Fourthly, uninvestable. Most hedge fund indices are not investable. What this means is that the indices include numerous hedge funds that are already closed to the new investors. Therefore, hedge fund indices cannot be used in the same way as equity indices. Fifthly, the definition. Another problem with hedge fund indices is that there are no clear rules for defining different hedge fund strategies, and different index providers define them very differently. Two indices tracking the same strategy assembled by different providers may have very low correlation with one another. And last but not least, sixthly, construction. Some hedge fund indices are equally weighted 
while others are weighted by the size of each fund in the index. Since a few very large funds exist alongside with a few very small ones, the result may be having an index that is skewed towards either extreme. So, does that mean that hedge fund indices are of no use at all? Not so. As the saying goes, that sometimes having some data is better than not having it at all. Although these indices present a whole host of problems, they are still useful in understanding broad trends and patterns such as the correlation between equities, bonds and the hedge funds. This information is useful for the purpose of creating asset allocation models. However, investors need to know that these indices are at best a rough indication of the hedge fund's performance. So, while I have included this topic on hedge funds in this podcast to help well, listeners gain some understanding, my own firm Provident has stopped using hedge funds for our clients since a long time ago. This is because over the past one and a half decades or even two decades of managing monies for our clients, we are convinced that actively managed funds based on market timing, including hedge funds, cannot beat the index over the long run. And even if they can do so in any year, they cannot beat it consistently. Through our experience and based on decades of academic research, the best way to get the returns one needs is through low-cost instruments such as ETFs, index funds, or evidence-based investments. Thank you for tuning in to Providence Money Wisdom. I will be back soon with the next episode. For more information on my book or Providence services, kindly visit Provident.com. I'll see you the next time. All analysis, views or opinions from interviews, recommendations and other information broadcasted, podcasted or published herein are provided for general information purposes only. Information expressed does not take into account any specific situation, particular needs or objectives and should not be construed as specific advice or a recommendation. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with a qualified investment, legal or tax professional before taking any action. Provident Limited does not accept any liability for any loss whatsoever arising from any use of the information broadcasted, podcasted or published herein. All contents and information contained herein may not be copied or reproduced in whole or in part by any means without prior written consent of Provident Limited.